and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. What are we drinking? Today we are drinking Title Shot. Made it specifically for WrestleMania this past year, so it is my Title Shot WrestleMania lager. Today we're going to bring to you 1981's Just Before Dawn. 81 was a great year for horror movies. Oh, for sure. This movie was directed by Jeff Lieberman. It stars George Kennedy. He's been in a gazillion things. <laughs> he was in Cool Hand Luke. He's in the Naked Gun movies. The Iger Sanction. <laughs> That's why I told you to take the sanction. We see two hunters. They're at this church, this old church. They go inside the church and they're kind of, you know, pissing around. One of them's actually kind of drunk. Yeah. I got the Holy Spirit here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you see somebody looking at them. They're kind of watching. The one guy goes outside. You see a machete go right through him. It goes yeah. out his ass the other end. <laughs> yeah. The killer comes out. And puts on his, like, vest and hat, and it scares the shit out of him, and he just takes off running. He runs into this group of kids. They're driving in an RV, and they're going to camp at a spot in the woods. He's all drunk, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> mumbling a bunch of stuff that there's somebody out there. Yeah. And the kids don't believe him. And they also don't want him around. Just leave him in the <laughs> <Yeah>. woods. <laughs> and they just take, just off, take off without him. As the RV is driving away, he sees the killer latch on to the back of the RV. Then the next morning, they go exploring and they hear this real creepy singing in the woods. They follow it to this river waterfall area and weird woman in the woods. She gets frightened and she takes off. And a couple of them head out to go skinny dipping, of course. And you see... The figure slowly wade into the water and just kind of disappear. <laughs> she can feel this kind of tickling. She's like, oh, no, don't, what are you doing? Don't, you're tickling. And she sees the boyfriend on the shore. <laughs> and she's like, freaks out and gets out of the water. One of the guys comes across this rope bridge. It looks really terrifying. It does. I wouldn't want to cross I wouldn't this. cross the fucking thing. <laughs> he starts crossing it. The killer comes out and starts chopping the ropes and the rope bridge yeah and the rope bridge fucking collapses and it looks great for a movie that's kind of considered low budge like this part is fantastic he survives and he's able to climb up the rope bridge gets to what he thinks is the safe side he gets up and the killer's there on the other side kicks him down and <laughs> first of the kids to to bite the dust yeah and it kind of took a while to get there but it was a worthwhile trek for that first kill <laughs> there's another couple going roaming around and they're taking pictures in the forest posing and mm -hmm, yeah. they, they come across this uh, old church the same from the beginning one of them loses his glasses and yeah. sees his figure in the distance and he assumes it's one of his friends and is coming closer and closer and we know that it's not. <laughs> yeah. She runs into the church and is now cornered in this church by the killer. And there's a big reveal at this point that we're not going to spoil for you. Yeah. Warren and Constance, and they're kind of wading down this kind of river area. Their buddy ends up <laughs> floating downstream, the, 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 the body. And there was a debate whether it was an accident, like he fell in the water, or whether he was killed. Yeah. And uh, she thinks that he was killed. And Warren, you don't know that! <laughs> Ty, the drunken guy from the beginning, and he runs into the park ranger. Unlike the kids, the park ranger actually believes him and sets out on his horse to go off to the rescue. In the meantime, night has fallen, and Warren has to go back to Jonathan's body because he realized he has the keys for the RV. And she's chased up a tree, and he's chopping down the tree <laughs> yeah. just with his machete. Time is on his side. He's, yeah. he's, he's got all night. If you want to see how the movie ends, keep watching. And there are a few twists along the way that's really worth waiting for it's kind of a difficult movie to explain so With, we, yeah without giving too much away yeah exactly so we tried to keep the the plot pretty pretty scant there are a lot of really redeeming qualities about this movie and the first one really is probably the music brad fidel did the music too and he did the terminator and uh, he also did serpent in the rainbow yeah and it's really good it's nice and ominous and it fits the setting perfectly. The setting of this movie is really good, and there, there's so many horror movies that take place in the woods. But there's something special about this set of woods, which is really cool, and that is the big canyon. Mm -hmm. It's got the, the rope bridge, and there's like waterfalls and stuff. Yeah. So it's a very like majestic feeling. It's actually a very, very 
beautiful setting. In a lot of horror movies, they make the setting so that you don't really want to ever be there. Yeah. But in this movie, it's like, hmm, uh, yeah, I kind of want to go there, yeah, actually. Yeah, I kind of want to be there. <laughs> I kind of want to camp out by that waterfall. And yeah. eh, if there's a guy in the woods, maybe not that big a deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. The framing of a lot of the shots is just really good. It's just yeah. really stunning. And for a kind of a, a low-budget movie that wasn't made by a, a big studio or anything, it looks really good. Yeah. It looks beautiful. The use of misdirection in this movie is is one of the hallmarks, I think. You see the guy following them, and you know that the guy's behind them. It's not like typical horror movies. Yeah, like most horror movies when they're in the woods and you hear the crackling in the background, there's always the question, or is yeah. that the killer or is it just something else? But in this movie, you know it's the killer because you're yeah. told right off the bat that he's there. He's on that RV the whole time. There's no jump scares in this movie. No. Which, which is, is a rarity too. Yeah. Like usually in those older kinds of movies, there's at least one. In this, there's nothing. They show you everything and they use that to their advantage. Yeah, you don't need the jump scare because they really take their time to build towards like that first kill, right? Yeah. You always see the killer there and you know that he's going to make his move at some point and you think it's going to happen in the water. Nothing nope. happens, right? It's <laughs> yeah. like, it's, they're, they're always teasing you. They use a lot of noises in this movie too, which is cool. You don't have to see the killer, but you hear the noises that they make. Kills the one guy, he steals his whistle. Yeah. So uh, then you hear the whistling in the woods. Yeah, so, and again, like, you know that he stole the whistle from him. Yeah. So you know that it's the killer there. Yeah. But you don't exactly know where he is, and you don't yeah. know if he's going to pop out or not. Now, this movie has a few things going for it, and one of the biggest things is something that we're not going to completely go into detail with because it's a huge spoiler if you haven't seen it. It did something Scream took some credit for. This movie did it way before that. But there's also a kind of another twist at the end, which is not so much a twist, but it's... Something that happens completely out of left field, <laughs> yeah. which is like you'd never see in any other movie. And there's a neat uh, kind of flip at the end where the male character, Warren, turns into a complete sobbing, bumbling moron. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't do anything. Yeah, completely useless. His muscles would be totally, totally useless. <laughs> you know, if you like movies, of course, like any woodsy movie, Deliverance. Yeah, Deliverance, um, obviously. The Canadian classic Rituals. Yeah. You know, Friday the 13th, of course. Then you would totally love Just Before Dawn. Great movie. He takes a lot of elements from other horror movies and really kind of, I'd say, does some, some things a lot better. Yeah, and they kind of pioneer a few things, too, you know. Yeah. And, uh, they, they sort of flip the whole typical horror movie thing yeah. on its head. Without you even noticing it until <laughs> yeah. you kind of analyze it later, right? Check out Just Before Dawn. And of course, keep, keep drinking. drinking.